Hallelujah. It's corporate prayer time. I know this is different to you guys, but I think you're going to love it. What I would like for you to do the way that we do corporate prayer is what I say you repeat it and you're speaking that over your life. The Bible tells us that we have whatsoever we say. So if you don't ever say, I am blessed, I am healed, you will never be blessed, you will never be healed. So if you are physically able to stand this morning, we ask that you do as we go boldly to the throne of grace this morning. For the word of God tells us that we can to come boldly to the throne to make our petitions known. So as we go boldly to the throne of grace this morning, I ask that you set your mind free of everything that has bothered you this week and put your mind on Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that can clear your mind and make everything right in your life. So just take a moment right there where you are and just concentrate and focus on Jesus. Can you see him this morning on the cross? Can you see him off the cross this morning? Can you see him moving in your situation this morning? Oh, I bless you, oh God, for you are God and you are God alone. There is none like you, Father. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for allowing us to come together in the mighty name of Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are the one, Lord God, that we look to, that no matter, Father God, what we are going through, God, that when we call upon your name, God, that you will hear us, God, and that you would help us, God. Because, God, you tell us that when we call upon your name, the name that's above all names, that every knee will have to bow at your name, God, that you hear us, Father. So, God, we thank you this morning that you Woke us up, God, closed in our right mind, started us on another day, God, another day that was not promised to us. And you brought us to the house of God. Father, thank you, Lord God, that in your house, God, there is liberty. In the house of God, there is peace, there is joy. And Father God, when we come to your house, God, we can expect, Lord God, to have peace and have joy, oh God. So Father God, we thank you for the times, oh God, that we left you, but God, you still had your hands upon us, Lord, guiding us and leading us, Lord God, in the direction that you, oh God, we want us to go. So, Father, we thank you right now that you are God and you are God alone. Thank you, oh God, that you are able, God, to bring us through even the roughest of times, God. But, Lord, we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor has been preaching on stewardship. And I just want to tell you that stewardship is being faithful with God's resources in whatever situation you're in. You can be a faithful steward or not in the midst of debt. You can be a faithful steward or not in the midst of plenty. Faithfulness and stewardship is not about where you are financially, but it is about being obedient to the resources that God has given you. Amen? Repeat this after me. Father, your wisdom guides me in making sound financial decisions. And because of this wisdom, everything 
we do prospers. And God is able to bless me abundantly. And God generously supplies everything I need. I believe that what I give will be given back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into my lap. I do not worry about how God provides my every need because I will continually seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. I have self-control over my finances because I am a good steward over all that God has given me, not spending according to my desires of my flesh, because I walk by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. If you receive that, give God some praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord with me this morning for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat this after me. Father, I thank you that according to Philippians 4 and 19, you meet all my needs according to his riches and your glory in Christ Jesus. I am worthy in handling wealth and prosperity because I am being a positive role model to our children and generations to come. I will not fear because my God is with me. He strengthens me and helps me and he causes me to be a light of the world because the spirit of God dwells within me. Therefore, I walk by faith and not by sight. And I live under God's supernatural protection. And God has great plans for me. And I am filled with hope for a great future. If you are trustworthy in handling God's prosperity that he gives you, give him some praise in this house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning, oh God, that we are faithful stewards over all, Lord, that you give us. Father, we take what you give us, oh God, and we multiply it, God, and let it do, do what you want it to do, God. Father, we thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that without you, O oh God, that we cannot do anything. But we can do all things through you, through Christ who strengthens us. So, Father God, bless this corporate prayer this morning. Bless each one that participated and the ones that did not, O oh God. For, Father God, your word tells us that we have what we say. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Let's stand on our feet and let's lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to give him glory in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. we love on you receive our love receive our love as we shout your name receive our praises receive our praises cause your name is high You are great, you are great, and greatly to be praised. We lift your name. As we love on you, receive our love. Receive our love as we shout your name. Receive our praises. Receive our praises. Because your name is high. Be glorified. Because you are great. You are great. And greatly to be praised. Cause your name is high, be glorified. No other name, no other name, no other name like yours. We lift your name. Oh. No one 
greater. Your love is greater than ours. No one greater. Your strength is greater than ours. No one greater. with me 
And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. And oh, how And oh, how you counsel me, eh? yet it still amazes me that I am your friend. So now I pour out my heart to you. Your presence, I am made new. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name And oh, how you walk with me And oh, how you talk with me And oh, how you tell me That I stop me cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory cause your power is within me no giant can defeat me cause you hold my hand no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my in your victory cause your power is within me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my hand no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory cause your power is within me no giant can defeat me cause you hold my hand no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory cause your power is within me no giant can defeat me Cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory Cause your power is within me No giant can defeat me Cause you hold my hand No fire can burn me No battle can turn me No mountain can stop me Cause you hold my hand No fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand, I'm walking in 
your victory Cause your power, it is within me Cause you hold my me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory cause your power is within me no giant can defeat me cause you hold my hand no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me Cause you hold my hand I'm walking in your victory Cause your power is within me No giant can defeat me Cause you hold my hand You know my name You know my name You know my name You know my name And oh how you comfort me And oh how you counsel me And oh, how you tell me that I am your own. Oh, how And it still amazes me that I am your friend. Oh, how you comfort me, and oh, how you counsel me. Yet it still amazes me that I am your friend. So now I pour out my heart to you. presence I am made new so now I pour out my heart to you hearing your presence I am
Come on, standing all over the room, standing all over the room. Come on, just lift your hands up to heaven if you know that God knows your name. Come on, if you're glad that he knows you by name. Come on, just lift your hands up. Right where you are, just lift your hands up. If you know that he knows your name. Think of the many ways that he counsels you and how he kept you. That when you should have lost your mind, that he kept you, that when the enemy came in like a flood, you should have been dead, but God lifted up a standard. Come on, is there anybody grateful to God that he knows your name? How he comforts you in the midnight hour when tears are rolling down your face, how he just holds you. Grandmama say rock you in the cradle of his arms. Is there anybody in here that glad you serve a God who can just rock you to sleep and he can hold you and tell you how much he loves you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It still amazes me. I, I don't deserve. Is there anybody in here that can testify that they don't deserve? Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you got to let your mind go back and just cry out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. It still amazes me. Father, pouring out at your feet to be filled up, Father. We pour out at your feet, Father. We came to be filled. Father, refill us again. God, has empty cups, God, we want our cup to run over in our life. More joy, more peace, more favor. Father, more of you, Lord. Fill us up, God. Even in the cyber sanctuary, you should be worshiping right now. The Bible declares that, that worship him must. No way around it. Worship him in spirit and in truth. See, it's in worship where the miracles happen. <laughs> It's in worship where you get delivered. It's, it's in worship where the shackles fall off. It's, it's in worship that, that, that the atmosphere is set for the word to be sown into our lives. Thanks be unto God. We give you glory for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We don't deserve it. As we get in your presence, God, there's the fullness of joy. God, we showed up, God, to receive joy. The joy that you give, the world can't give, and they certainly can't take it away from us. To be kept by Jesus, and we give you glory now. In Jesus' name, if you love him, come on, clap your hands this morning. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. 
I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord and worship him. Come on, anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord and not in the house of the morgue? Let me say that one more time. Glad to be in the service. Somebody ought to just throw it one finger right there. Just glad to be in the service. One more. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. One. One more time. One. Somebody ought to say, you know the hell I went through. Just one more time. One more time. Just to get in the presence of the Lord. Just one more time. Not in the house of the morgue, but in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Greet somebody, smile at somebody this morning, tell them it's good to be in the house of the Lord and not the house of the morgue. Amen. Not the because he didn't have to let you live. He he didn't have to let you live, but he allowed your golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. Come here, old deacon, that your your bed didn't become your cooling book, then your sheets didn't become your winding chain. That hallelujah. Just glad to be in the service. Just one more time, one more, one more time, one more time. Sit down if you can, sit down if you can. What a great God that we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God. I, I can only speak for the mightiness of him in my life. I know what I used to be before Jesus. Got a long way to go, but I thank God I ain't the way I used to be. Amen. And I'm better. I'm better. Somebody say I'm better because of Jesus. I'm, I'm better because of Jesus. On this fourth Sunday of March, this, this transitional weather day, amen, amen, amen. We praise God for all of you pressing your way out into the house of the Lord, into the house of the Lord, just wasn't going to woke up this morning. I say, Lord, you say tornado warning until 12 o'clock. Amen. I say, Lord, my life sometimes can be a tornado. <laughs> but Jesus will fix it. Hallelujah. So we pray for those in Mississippi who were affected uh, by tornadic activity. If you hadn't heard of the state of Mississippi was affected by a major tornado, so let's keep them lifted in prayer because y'all know it's always Alabama, it seemed like. Amen. Praise God. And so, so it could have been us again, but we praise God for his grace and his mercy and pray for those in the state of Mississippi who have been affected by, by um, uh, the tornadic activity. Also, let's continue to remember those in Selma who were affected by the tornadic activity. Amen. We went over and took some more supplies to them on uh, last, uh, this past Monday. Wasn't that Monday? Wasn't that Monday? That was Monday, right? Yeah. That was Monday. Yeah, that was Monday. Um, on uh, This past Monday, took over some more cases of water. Sister Tamika, uh, who's uh, one of our members who's watching us virtually this morning, uh, did a water drive at her school, water and some sanitary items that we uh, graciously took over to uh, Selma. So I want to thank uh, George Washington Car. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. My bad. No, I, I want to keep putting that George Washington. D.C. Wolf Elementary, my alma mater for uh, partnering with uh, our church to be a blessing to the city of Selma and those who are affected in Selma. Amen. Let's give them one big hand clap for that. Amen. 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 Again, it's almost Holy Week. Praise God. That, man, my, it's the most wonderful time of the year for me. I don't. Some of y'all like Christmas, but I, I, I'm a I'm a Resurrection Sunday fella. Huh? I, I, I know you say, well, Pastor, you couldn't have got the Resurrection without the uh, without uh, Christmas. I, I, I don't know when he was born. We know that ain't his real birthday, but I know when he died. One Friday, y'all ain't talking to me here. <laughs> Yeah, so as we prepare ourselves to enter into uh, the season of resurrection, uh, be mindful of the significance of Christ and his relationship to you uh, during this season. Amen, 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 amen. Let's prepare our hearts to give this morning. Of course, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We don't ever beg. We don't ever uh, 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 stand and give, you, tell, give me a hit of our line, $100 line. 
thousand dollar line. If you want to get in that thousand dollar line over there, right there, start right there. Praise God, Amen. And, and somebody said that's that's a, that, that's too low. Ten thousand. You're a ten thousand dollar giver. You just bring that right up. You're my blessing. You right now. Praise God, Amen, Amen. But as we prepare our hearts to give, Amen, Amen. What if the Lord lays on your heart? The Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, amen, one who gives not grudgingly, not out of necessity, but we understand we are grace givers, and because of God's grace on our life, because of the job that I have, the spouse that I have, the church I attend, the, 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 the money I got, amen, all the things that he's helped me receive and achieve, that I got it because of him, and that's the grace of God. Y'all know what grace is? Unmerited favor. I don't deserve it. So we give out of that, amen. We give out of that. So as we pray our hearts to give for those who are tithers, continue to be tithers. We know that the Lord will open up the windows of heaven uh, and pour you out more than you can receive because of your faithfulness to his word, amen. As we pray our hearts to give, let's do that. Let's do that. Those of you virtually, going to put some information up on the screen. Don't you spectate, you participate as well, amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Come on. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Joy today is mine. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. Got up. Got up singing, shouting victory. Yeah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Father, we thank you for our giving. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for the open windows of heaven now being over our life. We thank you, Father, for the tither. We thank you for rebuking the devourer for our sake. We thank you for now causing men to sow into our bosom because you love us, you're forgiven. You have them on assignment to sow into us, and we give you glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hand for your giving. For those of you electronically who still may be giving, you can do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you, my wife and I in the sanctuary, if I was sanctuary, don't spectate and I participate. Amen. 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 So you got that information up there. You still can continue to give throughout service. Amen. 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 Praise God. You got an announcement this morning? Praise God. Come on. Amen. The pastor had a brain cloud just a minute ago. I, I just lost all of it. I, I, it came back to me. Praise God. The Holy Spirit brings stuff back to your memory. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all look so beautiful out there. I just want to get up and just remind you guys about the women's brunch tea on May the 6th at 10 o'clock. Please let us know if you are um, going to be in attendance. Please see me after service. Pastor will get that Eventbrite link up so that you guys can register for the women's brunch and tea on May the 6th at 10 o'clock a.m. This is a free event, okay? It is free, so just register to let us know that you're coming so that we don't over-prepare or under-prepare. Um, and also, if you have given your child a Easter speech, you know, because we um, said last Sunday that we were going to allow the parents to do that, but if you have done that, you are doing that, please let us know so that, we'll, so that we can do things decently and, and in order on a Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so please see us after service so that we'll know kind of what they're saying and where to put it in the service. Um, and that's all that I have. Thank you. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give it up for Lady Courtney this morning. She looking mighty nice. Amen. 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 
to God. Let's give our, our, our musicians a hand clap this morning as well. They do such a phenomenal job and doing, leading us in worshiping too. Um, Sister Ella? Yes, Sister Ella. She always standing on that door smiling and, and greeting when y'all come in. Give a big hand clap. And <clears throat> Yeah, I said that to say she needs some help. She needs some help. Sister Ella at one time used to have five or six ushers for COVID. We used to have five or six ushers, yeah. Five or six folks. There's more folks too than COVID too now. But folks making a comeback, praise God. And so if you want to uh, support her and help her in the uh, hospitality ministry, you need to see her immediately after service so that she can uh, get you steered in the right direction. Amen. So good to see all of you this morning. Hope that... Uh, you had a great week that uh, you saw God's favor on your life in some capacity or another. If you didn't, this week can be, will be if you declare it, your week for your miracle. Amen. You ought to speak that over your life. <clears throat> uh, Minister Barbara told you this morning that there's great power in confession. Confession, and watch this, and profession. What we don't do, we don't profess the word of God over our life. We don't speak what God says over our life. And you got to make sure that you declare things over your life. Uh, so that God can perform his word in your life. Amen. Amen. I uh, want to say um, uh, to those who uh, have um, committed to uh, security training on next week, I need to see you meet after service. Uh, be discreet, be discreet. You ain't got to tell nobody. I'll meet you in the conference room, in the conference room shortly after service. Uh, after Pastor Hook, 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 Hug wives, kiss babies, and shake hands. I, I'll come and we'll meet in the in the conference room just through the through the doors here to my left uh, in the in the conference room. If we could meet meet after service, um, want want to uh, just say um, <clears throat> we lost a, uh, a good friend this week, a good friend and our uh, accountant. So let's keep uh, the Woods and Smalls family lifted in prayer. Uh, this week, uh, a, uh, death knows no age. That's the sad part about death. It knows no age. Knows no age. So, very young man. Um, um, we transition to be home with the Lord, so let's keep them <clears throat> uh, lifted in prayer, if you would. Like I said, he was our accountant. He kept us straight. He was a good friend, a good confidant, and, and he was a good financial advisor. He told us how to keep that stuff straight, praise God. We pray for his wife and their daughters, the three daughters, uh, in this uh, dreadful time. So if you would, you know the power of prayer, just say uh, the Smalls and Woods family when you uh, say your prayers. Amen. 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 Uh, Resurrection Sunday, of course, is the uh, uh, second Sunday, the ninth of uh, this month. And so I look forward to seeing all of you uh, in worship uh, hopefully in person too. Some of you guys who are watching us virtually, who watch us week in and week out, uh, will join us in the uh, in the uh, sanctuary uh, to uh, partake in uh, Holy Communion. We'll take partake in Holy Communion on Resurrection Sunday, uh, the second Sunday of April. So let's prepare ourselves for that. Amen. Amen. We, of course, you see, you've uh, seen this morning. Uh, last week we have a couple of student interns. I think that number is growing. I think that number is growing. I was told this morning we may have another one. And so, of course, I told you, uh, let's be open and uh, welcoming to uh, my students, amen, who have been tasked to teach them in, in uh, the Excel Bible College. And so we've, into our second semester, getting ready to roll into the third, I think. No, wait, 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 yeah, third, third semester, yeah. And so uh, y'all pray for pastor. Uh, <clears throat> so <laughs> it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge, but... Uh, Thank God for an opportunity to train and teach uh, other leaders in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. There'll be more information. We'll get through this pilot year first. Uh, to uh, Then we'll let you all know for opportunities for you to be able to uh, come. Uh, if you're uh, interested in receiving associates, bachelors, uh, masters, even a PhD uh, through an accredited uh, Bible college, I uh, will have that information to you. As well, of course, again, we're going through a pilot phase. I sit on the board of directors or the board of elders uh, at uh, True Divine, and so uh, it's our Bible college that we started. And so, uh, again, as an accredited, men and women who desire to grow more and more in Christ can attend an accredited Bible college. Uh, Dr. Rose, I ain't forgot about you. We're coming to get you now. We're coming to get you, praise God. 
Amen. Good to see you all in worship this morning. Wave at somebody. Just wave at somebody. You didn't come with me. Tell them good morning. Wave at somebody. You didn't come with me. Tell them good morning. Smile at them. Show them all 32, all 22, all two if you got them. Just smile and say amen. Praise God. If you ain't got nothing but guns, just give it to them, baby. Give it to them. Give it to them. Praise God. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be, a, don't be afraid of men in their faces. That's somewhere over there in the book, ain't it? Y'all, okay, praise God. <laughs> amen. 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 Um, uh, join us Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night Bible study. Wednesday night Bible study. Of course, uh, we're in person and we're on Zoom. Uh, so uh, come and join us on Wednesday nights. Uh, we'll be glad to see you. Glad to have you. Uh, come in, receive a word. I don't know about you. One day a week just ain't enough word for me. And I know that there's so many other mediums of word to receive and get out there that you can get from YouTube and stuff like that. But come on to your church and get connected uh, in your Bible study and in Sunday school on Sunday morning. Uh, Minister Brittany did a very phenomenal job this morning uh, in Sunday school. Minister Gamble does a phenomenal job uh, on Sundays. And so um, come on out. Come on out. There's opportunities for you to grow spiritually. And as believers, that's what our goal is, to grow spiritually. Amen. Amen, amen. To grow more and more in the knowledge and stature of Christ uh, should be your desire. Amen. First time visitors, first time visitors. Your first time visitor, wave at us, wave at us, wave at us. First time guests, any first timers, any first timers, no first timers. Everybody, everybody return to guests. Praise God, praise God. Come on, let's give everybody a big hand clap of praise for in person, in person, in person. And if you're virtually, if you're a first time guest, if you would put that in the chat, put FTV, first time visitor. And we'd love to uh, correspond and communicate with you. Uh, send us a private message with your information so we can reach out and touch bases with you. Uh, we praise God for your presence and for uh, your viewership and for those of your sponsorship. Amen. Your sponsorship matters. Not just your viewership. Not just coming, but your sponsorship uh, shows that you're connected to a place. You're connected to a place. And Jesus says where you're connected, that's where your, your heart going to be. They say where well, your treasure too, that's where you're your heart gonna be praise God, Amen. And so we thank God for all that you do to ensure that Kingdom Seekers continues to be the church that God has called us to. Y'all ready for some word? I'm ready for some word. I'm ready for some word. Let's pray. We'll jump right into it this morning. Father, we love you. We honor you. We give you glory for just being God in our life. For just showing yourself mighty, showing yourself strong, showing yourself faithful in our life. We don't deserve your faithfulness, God, because at most times we're not as faithful to you or as faithful as we should be to you, but you keep on extending grace and mercy toward us in our faithlessness. We thank you for being a faithful God, for blessing us, God, beyond measure, and we give you glory, God. We give you glory for the small things, the air we breathe, God, just the small things that we take for granted, we thank you for. But we thank you for Jesus this morning. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And we thank you for it. We thank you for the price that he paid, the life that he gave so that we can receive life. We thank you now. As we showed up for your word, Lord God, we get into your word, that your word get into us, that I decrease you, increase in me. None of me ask that you anoint these lips of clay. Give me the words to say, hide me behind Calvary's cross that they see not me but they see you high and lifted up for you said if we lift you up you draw all men unto you the devil thought he had one but he didn't get the memo that, the, that as they lifted you high you would be drawing men to you we give you glory in Jesus name Amen, amen. Come on, give him one big hand clap. One big hand clap right there. One, one big hand clap right there. One big hand clap right there. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, let's, let's give our uh, sound team, our video team a big hand. They, I know y'all see a lot of moving and going and, uh, in the sanctuary, and so they work hard to provide a quality experience to those who may not be able to be in the virtual sanctuary or in the physical sanctuary, but maybe in the virtual sanctuary. Second Kings, Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter number four, as we continue in our stewardship series, 
this month in our stewardship series. We may come back to this after Palm Sunday, after Resurrection Sunday. We may come back as the Lord leads us uh, concerning stewardship uh, to continue some more because I think it's vitally important that stewardship in the body of Christ uh, is much needed, much needed. I told you we come to church, we get good Jesus, we get good singing, but we don't get much talk about stewardship, stewardship, how to handle the resources that God has placed in your hands. Amen, 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 amen. Second Kings chapter number four, Second Kings chapter number four, very familiar passage of scripture. Very familiar passage of scripture, 2 Kings chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 1. King James Version, if you got another version, you can read along in the version that you have. It should flow somewhat similar to the King James Version. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet of Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knoweth that my servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen, to be slaves, one translation says. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow three vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And verse 6 says, and it came to pass, somebody say it came to pass, that when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, ain't no more. And all the oil stayed. There ain't no more to pour into. And one translation said the oil stopped flowing. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. Just for a little while this morning, just for a little while, I want to continue in our series. No more excuses. Can you say no more excuses? It's time to improve my financial portfolio. Yeah, it's time to improve my financial portfolio. No, no more excuses. No more uh, excuses. Again, Financial Peace University. You may wonder why I didn't make that announcement, but Financial Peace University. I told you on last week, send us an email at uh, administration at kingdomseekersmontgomery.org and, 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 and enroll for Financial Peace University because you ain't going to be able to have no more excuses for my money being funny and my change being strange. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I I know it's been uncomfortable for me the last three weeks, too, because y'all ain't said nothing to me, praise God. Y'all don't get much interaction during this month, praise God. Whenever the preacher get to talking about finances, the church get quiet, amen. Preacher just preach Jesus and let me have my money. Ain't no, I, I'm not going to go to heaven and stand before God and God say, well, why you didn't tell them to be better stewards? It's time out because, one, there's too much information. Somebody say too much information. It's too much godly wisdom out there for us to remain ignorant concerning how we manage what's not even ours. I've been telling you over the last couple of weeks, the Bible says in Psalms uh, chapter number 24 that the earth is the Lord's. And, and, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. Well, God don't go to work like I do 40 hours a week and make this money. But who woke you up this morning? He gave you the breath and the activities, come here, grandmama, of your limbs to be able to go out and to earn some money. So everything that we have comes from God. Yeah, everything that we have. And so what we have to do and what we have to understand is how to take what God has placed in my hands and make good use of it. 
talked about last week, being a, you know, wasteful spending, wasteful spending. We do a lot of wasteful spending. I talked to you over the last couple weeks about, be, uh, well, two weeks ago, I talked about being a crooked manager. How can you be a crooked manager? Crooked man. Don't, don't allow God to call you a crooked manager and fire you on the spot. We saw this what the text did. God fired him on the spot. Jesus telling the story of the man, he fired him on the spot. But that crooked manager got real crooked, didn't he? He went back and figured out how I can get back in the good graces with God. What I'm telling you is if you made mistakes with your money before, it's not too late to start over again. Y'all, if you have not made wise decisions, if you have not made faithful decisions concerning what God has entrusted you with, today is a new day. Come here, Crook Franklin. You can start today by having, watch this, a changed mind concerning my money. A changed mind concerning what God has called me, watch this, to be a good manager or a good overseer of. As I was preparing for this, it was last night, last night, no, night for last, night for last, uh, I, I put a quote in my, my notes that, uh, that, 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 that I heard the Lord say to me, and it's going to bless your life, it's going to bless your life. Watch what, watch what he said to me. He, he, he said to me, he, he said this to me, watch this, let me find it, because see, when you say, if you don't write it down, you'll forget it, you'll forget it, you'll forget it. That's why I tell you, when you go into prayer, you, 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 it was 12.01, uh, uh, so it would have been Friday morning, 12.01 Friday morning. I, 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 I heard the Lord say to me while, while I was meditating over this, if you make sacrifices now, you'll be satisfied later. Okay, y'all, somebody ought to tweet that. Oh, that. That came directly from a revelation from the Lord at 12.01 Friday morning. You ought to put that on tweet, on Snapchat. If you make the sacrifices now, you'll be satisfied later. I told you, I've been telling you that I ain't been making cracking jokes on people who work at Walmart. None against them who work at the front door. And they're mostly older individuals. Individuals who have retired, who ain't got enough money to, to live. I don't want to be like that, so I make the sacrifices now so I can be satisfied later. Can I tell you, if you keep on living, later's going to come, later's going to come. If you just keep living, later's going to come. And you don't want to get to that point in your life where you look back over your life and you say, I wish I would have, I wish I could have, I wish I should have. I've been telling you, I've been telling you, some of us gonna get so much disposable income, that probably, we'll probably spent that money up by now, I don't know, but we get so much disposable income during this season in our, in, 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 in our hands. I don't get no taxes back, so I don't get no eco tax. I have to pay back every year, praise God. I don't get no, me and Courtney don't get no income, income tax. We don't get no income tax. We gotta pay back every year, watch this. Some of us gonna touch some, so much money in this season, there's no reason for you to pay up your insurance policy for the entire year. I got about three amens in the building. I got about two head nods in the building. It's no reason for you to go out there and make sure, watch this, as the text says, you're gonna see in the very first verse, the very first verse, what happened? Papa died and left him with alone. Okay, I'm in the text already, I'm in the text. The very first verse says that the husband had died and the repo man showed up. Okay, I'm in the text. Okay, okay, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all, y'all don't like the way I said it. Let me read the way the Bible said. Now there was a certain, a certain woman, uh, a crowd, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet of Elijah, said, "Thou servant, my husband is dead. He dead. And thou knowest that my servant loved God. Can I tell you? Don't be so foolish that you love God that you leave your family alone. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me right here." We got too many folk in the church who shout, huck and buck, speak in tongue, roll on the pews, but die broke. I ain't gonna get no help in here this morning. Who die and leave their family. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was at home. And when he died, all he left us was alone. Not A-L-O-N-E, but A-space but a space L O A N. I made up in my mind that I ain't leaving my family alone. That they gonna get enough money that when the snatch man show up, <laughs> they'll be able to pay off all the debt. 
Can I tell you? I told you last week, I dropped something on you last week, now I shared something privately. I made it public. Applied for a million dollar life insurance policy. $160 a month. Back that up. I start off telling you some of us are going to get so much disposable income in this season that we should be able to pay up our life insurance for a year. Now you do the math. That's less than $2,400 a year. That if I go out there and got, get hit on Atlanta Highway crossing the street, my family for less than $2,000 a year will be able to, they, 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 they don't even show up at the funeral and cry. They show up at the funeral and say, oh, big daddy left us a good lump sum. And you wonder why, why us folks be trying to get in the caskets? If you, have you ever been to one of our contemporaries' funerals? Man, ain't no tear in the room. Okay, y'all ain't never been to any of our, our, our brothers' films. Us, you know, y'all ain't never been to nothing. But they ain't crying. You know what they saying? Money, money, money. We're going to miss you, big daddy. Money. Because watch this. They take, watch this, life insurance and create generational wealth. See, see, watch this. We are no longer ignorant. We shouldn't be ignorant. When I told you a couple weeks ago, grandma would only have the, the $5,000 life insurance policy that the insurance man came by and picked up the envelope. Every month she probably paid $25,000 for a $5,000 policy. Okay, y'all didn't live in the country. Had the insurance man come by every week, every month, once a month. Came by once a month. Grandma said, go in there and get the envelope. Give it to him. Yeah. Ain't no excuses. No excuses for you to leave out here today and say, well, nobody never told me I can afford life insurance. If you're under the age of 50, it's cheap. Watch this. Even with health conditions. Well, Pastor, I take a little blood pressure medicine. They'll still insure you. But you got to make it up in your mind. I ain't going to make no more excuses. I'm going to take what God has given me and I'm going to watch this leave an inheritance for my children's children. I told y'all a couple of weeks ago. And I, I wasn't joking. I was serious. I was serious. I was so serious. I was so serious that when I die, I want the LJ Neal to put my picture above the mantelpiece. I'm going to give me one standing on the back of that chair like that. I'm going to be standing up. You know how those rich folks pose? You ever been to the Vanderbilt mansion? They got that picture. And Mr. Vanderbilt standing up there like this. I'm going to give me a picture just like that. So when I go, they put it up there and they say, the grandchildren say, Woo, we got this because of Big Daddy. Y'all know Big Daddy? Because you know when you're dead, they ain't coming to the cemetery. You do know that, right? Only the first generation gonna come and see you. Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, birthday. Grandchildren ain't gonna holler come to the grave. But I want them to look at that picture and say, yeah, big dad, I know him. But because I made a decision, a choice to ensure, watch this, that my family is protected. Don't be like, the, when I was reading it, I couldn't get past the first verse. I could not get past the first verse. And then when the Lord spoke to me about, if, if you make sacrifices now, you'll be satisfied later. Can you imagine how embarrassed this woman was? Men, come in the room. Married men aspire to be married. Can you imagine how embarrassing it was for the woman of God to go for, for, for the woman of God, the wife of the man of God, to go to the prophet of God and say, My husband left us broke? That's the first verse. Look at it, read it. That's what happened. She said, Oh, Elijah, man of God, prophet of God, just joking, joking and died here and left us with all these bills. What us gonna do now? Five things I'm gonna tell you. Five things I'm gonna tell you to help you improve your finances. You should already be right now some stuff. You should already be hearing the voice from behind my voice. You should have heard me. God, God didn't even have to speak to you. I told you, go get me some life insurance. And watch this. Don't get whole life. Get term. 
I can't afford a million dollar whole life, but a 30 year term cost $165. I've told you last week, and y'all think I'll be picking on Courtney, but Courtney spent $165 a month at Chick fil A. I'm not, y'all think I'm going to be picking on it, but I'm serious. I'm, I'm just telling you. And I said her because I know our business. I don't know what your habits are. I, I don't know what you're doing every day that you can navigate or redirect that money to make sure that I make sacrifices now so I can be satisfied later. See, 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 see. You could take that money and divert it into a Roth IRA. Come in the room, come in the room, banker. There's a banker in the room, there's a banker in the room. There's a banker in the room that can tell you that he has some wealthy clients who probably got seven-figure bank accounts that built it through the stock market. We talked about that last week. J Jesus told him, he said, you could have at least put my money to the usury and made some interest. I told you last week too. Don't trust that bank. Point zero zero two percent interest. You, I told you about one of the pastors. They put they, their church got two hundred fifty thousand dollars in their in their in their building fund. They made four hundred fifty some dollars. One year in interest. He said he told his finance director, "You got to find something better to do with our money besides sitting in that bank making four hundred fifty some dollars." So you gotta get along with God. Watch this. As I told you last week. Get connected to a sound financial advisor with a proven track record. You walk in the room, I'm going to increase my portfolio, but I need to see your portfolio. Who money you manage? How many millionaires you didn't help make? Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all, I'm talking about money in church. Yeah. How many thousand heirs? You may not desire to be a millionaire. I don't desire to be a millionaire. I just want to be wealthy. I don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to be wealthy. If millions come, praise God. I ain't turning it down. But that's not my desire. I just want to be healthy and wealthy. Debt free. So not only do you want to check your portfolio, but you want to check the individual that you want to manage your money's portfolio. <laughs> I mean, no broke folk can't help broke folk. You, you got to find somebody who know a little something about money. Let me move real quick. Let me move look. There's three, five ways. Five ways I want to tell you this morning. Five ways. Five ways. Let's examine this, this text. Watch it. Watch it. First thing, we already read verse number one. Already read verse number one. The creditors came to take unto himself. He gone, instead of, he said, now, I don't, I don't, I don't, you can't pay up? Give me them boys. They'll work your way. They'll take care of that loan that daddy had left them. And can I tell you, now they just come and take the house from you. you just, I, I don't want my family to be houseless if I die young. I, no man knows that they know. I, I don't know when I'm going to die. I ain't planning to die. No, Bishop Taylor, you ain't getting my body. He was watching service last week and said, Bishop, you get ready to die? He was a mortician, friend of mine. I said, oh, no, Bishop, I ain't going nowhere. I'm just teaching on fine. He said, oh, I just caught the wrong part of the service. I thought you was getting ready to die. <laughs> what kind of friend is that? <laughs> All he heard was death. Oh, a body, a body? Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> watch this, watch this. You're going to improve your financial portfolio. Watch this. Through personal initiation. Through an omission, through an omission. She, 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 she wasn't too proud that she couldn't tell somebody, I got a problem. It, you, you can't be too proud to admit that I got a problem concerning my my stewardship, concern of my family. You can't be too proud now. You got to be willing to go and tell somebody, man, I got a problem. I need some help concerning my, my, my financial portfolio. She went to the man of God. Great place to go. Man of God going to tell you, go down there, look, okay. Yeah, all right, now you're doing this, you're doing this spiritually. Now go down there and see the guy at, at Morgan Stanley. Uh, go see uh, my, my good friend, Mr. Ricky Pitts. He going to get you on the right, right track. She went to the man of God, and, and, and he gives her now the spiritual solutions. 
But he also gave us some natural solutions as well. Watch this. Second thing, second thing, second thing. Verse number two, verse number two. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in your house? What's in your house? It was bad because she said, I ain't got nothing in this house. She must have had already pawned the furniture. She, she must have had already had the yard sale. Got rid of everything in the house. Because she said, all I got is a pot of oil. That's all I got. She said, I ain't got nothing in here but a pot of oil. I ain't got no Van Goghs on the wall I can sell. I, 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 ain't got, I, ain't, I ain't got no fancy jewelry. Uh, the pawn shop already gave me and um, took care of some of the debt. Because you do know this what happen when folks die with debt, don't you? Folks start selling off stuff. We start doing estate sales. and Let me run down here and see if I can get $50 for that. And I can get $30 for this. and So I can pay off this bill and catch up that bill. And some folks ain't in debt doing that. Some, so, so, some folks ain't dead doing that. Watch this. Watch it. Watch it. The text said, the text said, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Then he said, Go. First thing you got to do is that admission. You got to go. You, once, once you admit it, you got to get off your do nothing and do something. You, once you come to the realization, I came to the realization, I, I, I don't want to die and leave my family broke. I got to do something. First thing the man of God tells her to do, he tells her, go borrow three vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, bar not a few. Just bar, bar not a few. He says, he says uh, it, evidently, there ought to be somebody you connected to that can help you just a little. That, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Uh, uh, here's what I learned um, about studying people who have wealth of resources. They don't hang around people who don't have resources. Okay, let me say it like this because somebody's going to get mad with me. Broke folk don't hang out with, 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 uh, with, with, with broke folk. Okay, broke folk hang out with broke folk. But rich folk don't hang out with broke folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, can, can I help you? I'm going to help bring to Natch. Come on, come on, let me help me, young folk. Let me help me, young folk. Young folk. Uh, uh, what the name is? Married to Beyonce. What the name is? Jay-Z. Y'all know when Jay-Z finances really change. No? When he started running up there hanging out with Warren Buffett. His mindset was shifted concerning how money worked. Then he started divert. Go back and watch track work. He started diversifying into this and diversifying into that and diversifying into that. Here's what he did. He understood that I can't just have just this one pot. I got to be diversified. Because of the stock market crash. Okay, if the banking systems, as we've seen here in the past couple of weeks, crash, I got it somewhere else. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. He, he, he says, he says, he says, go, go, go borrow, go borrow, verse number four. And, and when they and when they come in, and when they come in, shut the doors up behind your sons, uh, you you and the sons, and, and pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Did y'all hear that? Come on now, y'all. Y'all think about this. If she only had one vessel, he says, go borrow vessels, and then take what you got and just begin to pour. <sighs> okay, let me help you. Take what God has already put in your hands and make good use of it. Start walking by faith and not by sight. Okay. I, I know you only got a little, oil, but you got a word from God. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I know you got just a little oil, but you got a word from God that if you just start pouring, <laughs> if you just start doing, God will get involved and he'll cause, watch this, y'all like this. I don't like this part. I don't, I don't like subtraction. I don't just like addition, I like multiplication. <laughs> he says, if you just start pouring, God will multiply. What's that? What's that? Third thing can happen. 
you can improve your financial portfolio through personal cooperation. Through personal. Not only do you got to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, second thing, I it's, it's number two. I've got number two. Thank you, all number two. Personal consultation. You got personal initiation, then you got personal consultation. She, she consulted with the man of God. He told her what to do. And then the third thing, you can improve your financial portfolio through personal cooperation. Here's what you got to do. When you get the knowledge, do something with it. This sermon series is designed to be a fire starter. I, I, I am by no means, disclaimer, a financial advisor. But my goal is to hopefully get you started with what little you got to go see a financial advisor so that you can take the little that you've been faithful over and God multiplied into a lot. Talking about stewardship. Talking about stewardship. Personal corporate. Verse number five. Verse number five. Watch this. Watch it. Verse number five. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and they kept pouring. They were cooperating with what God, the man of God, had instructed them to do. You got to cooperate. You can't. Faith comes by hearing. You can't just expect to do nothing by, by, uh, to receive something by doing nothing. Not only does faith come by hearing, but it comes by hearing the word of God. But James said you got to be a doer of what you heard or it profits you nothing. Personal cooperation, personal cooperation. Y'all still with me? 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 It's quiet as I because you got to cooperate. You got you got to do what God tells you to do. You got to do be obedient to what God tells you to do. Be obedient to what the pastor shares with you, the knowledge he shares with you, and then and then then be obedient with the financial consultant that God sends in your life. You should walk out of this room in March saying, Pastor, I ain't getting no big income tax, but I took your advice. I got me a life insurance policy. So if I die, my family will be blessed. Can I tell you statistics say the average age of the church is 10 years above the pastor, 10 years below the pastor. That's about the dynamics of our congregation. Minus there are a few seasoned saints who are, uh, fall out that demographic that, uh, that make up this body. There are a few, there are a few. Praise God for you. Thank God for you. That wisdom that God still has amongst us young folk. Praise God for you. you got to be able to take wise counsel. you got to be able to do what the word of God instructs you to do. And stewardship should be very important to the believer. Watch this. Stewardship, watch this. I know I've been talking about money this month, but it flows way beyond money. How you a steward with what the word has called you to. Stewardship flows beyond money, but this month we're talking about stewardship in your finances. Personal cooperation. Personal cooperation. She, she kept pouring. She kept pouring. She kept pouring. She had one jar. She said, just one jar. One jar. That one jar. He, he, watch this. Watch this. Look at this. He never told her to go get more oil. He said, go get more jars. Good man. God, y'all missing it. He didn't say go get more oil. He said, just go get more jars. Go get more vessels. Even if you don't have the money, big money to invest, start with something little. Well, I can't go over there and get them a thousand dollars a month to put into a Roth IRA or into a retirement, but you can get a hundred. Let me help you. The average cost of a, a Big Mac. It's $10 to 12 somewhere right now. I don't know. I can't remember, I wonder, I can't remember what it was. But about $12 for a Big Mac. It used to be like $3.99. $2.99. Whopper combo. $10. Good Lord. If you don't eat lunch, take a sandwich five days a week. That's 50 right there that you can invest. Boy. <laughs> don't drink two six packs a week. Drink just one. Okay, all right. Did pastor just say to tell the folk to drink just one? See, they immediately went to alcohol. See, they immediately went to alcohol. You could be drinking a six-pack of Coca-Cola, two six-packs a week. See, y'all immediately went to alcohol. 
cut back on the cokes and save that money. You'll have money to invest. Cut back on. You may be two packs a day smoking. I don't know why in 2023 anybody would still smoke. I ain't figured it out yet. But I understand it's an addictive behavior. It's hard to get rid of. But you got to start kicking that can. That can going to start kicking you. They tell you on the side. The pork chops don't tell you that they're going to they gonna give you high blood pressure. But them cigarettes tell you this will cause cancer. It's not going to cause. I ain't going to get no amen right there. Stewardship goes beyond money. It goes to stewardship of my health because this is the Lord's temple. Now, I say, now, Pastor, I'm trying to work on my temple. I'm trying to work on it. I'm working on it. I'm doing good. Praise God. Got on the scale the other day. I was 15 pounds down. Praise God. But I got to be a good steward of what God has given me. I got to do better with this thing. Let me move a little hastily. Let me move a little quicker. Let me move a little quicker. Somebody say, Pastor, it's almost time. Almost time. I'm almost time. Just trying to let y'all get beyond the rain. I think it's supposed to stop about 12 o'clock. Amen. Praise God. You get about 12, 12 15. I, the rain supposed to stop, I think. I don't know. I just made that up. Praise God. It, sound, it sounded good. To ask for a few more minutes. Now, I'm at my first close right there. I'm like, no, you know, as a preacher, I can get three clothes. I get three, right? I get three. I get three. I get ready to close. Praise God. Fourth thing, fourth thing, fourth thing. Y'all ready? Let me move a little quick. Let me move a little quick. Fourth, fourth thing, fourth thing. You can improve your financial portfolio through personal application. Not only just personal cooperation, but there has to be personal application. She, she, she heard, she applied. 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 You heard, you applied. I'm telling you, it's no re you, you don't have to make a, a lot of money to be a good steward with what God is putting in your hand. You ain't got to make a lot. You just got to be a good manager. He who is faithful, we saw that last week, he who is faithful over a little. He that is faithful, watch this, of another man's God. He can trust you down with more. I told you, got to slide it in at the preacher. It always, you, you, you got, I told you last week, if I had $100, I gave you 10, I, I gave you uh, 90, and you say, I gave you 100, you keep 90, give me 10 back, all of y'all will run up here. It has to start with your giving to him. Tithing is the basic level. So many other givings in the Bible. It's the basic level. As a believer, nobody should struggle as a believer. Why do I struggle with tithing? I don't understand that. When I came to the revelation of giving to God concerning, I hadn't been a tither. I've said this before. I hadn't been a tither in years. I don't look at what I get in and give based on what I give. And I always give more and more. Because I understand that the more I give, come here, grandmama. Yes, God. I learned that at an early age. The more I give, the more he gives. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help you. All right, all right, all right. Personal application, personal application. Somebody say, hurry up, Pastor. You, 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 you. I told you this ain't about getting money to me. It's getting money to you. How you can get more. Because if you get more, watch this. If you're in debt, you can't see how to give. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. That's why you got to come to financial peace so you can learn how to get out of debt. Then when you get out of debt, you give more when you get out of debt, right? You can be more generous. You can do more. You can get more. We have bike drive. You say, I want to get $500 too, Pastor. Here I am. Here I am. I get $500 too, Pastor, because I'm out of debt. Fifth thing, fifth thing, and I'm done. Fifth thing, fifth thing, fifth thing, fifth thing, I'm done. Fifth thing, I'm done. Yeah, that's that's it. That my, I think that my second close, I'm a third one. That my second, that my third, might be my third. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't keep track. That third one, okay, it's official. It's third one. The fifth thing, y'all ready? Write this down. Y'all write this down. Y'all write it down. Y'all taking notes. 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 notes. You can improve. I did give you four personal applications. Number five, you can improve your financial portfolio through obedient instruction. Verse number six. Verse number six. And I'm gonna show you in the text, and I'll be done. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, she said unto her sons, bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, ain't no more vessels. And the oil don't stop pouring. Showed up in debt. Showed up, left with a loan. Look at what happens concerning instruction. He says, ain't no more oil. Meaning, God does supply your every need and some. Okay, well, short term, Pastor. And some, y'all ready? And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go. Watch what he tell her to do sell the oil, pay the debt. Okay, I 
told you, he, not only will he supply your need, but he'll give you more than enough. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly all we can actually even think according to the power that works. Now, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even, even, even ask or, or even, even think. She, she just wanted to get out of debt. Oh, God. She just wanted to get out of there. If I can just get this monkey off my back, if I can just get the repo man from, he got the car hooked up, he ready to pull it out the driveway. If I can just get uh, uh, the mortgage company to take the chains off the door, if I can just, because my husband left me in bad shape, if I can just get, the man of God say, sell the oil, pay off the debt, and live in the overflow. <laughs> and live in the overflow. So what you need to be doing? You need to say, okay, Lord, I want to be a good steward of what you put in my hands and, 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 and not only am I going to be faithful to that which is yours, because I'm faithful to that which is yours, you'll give me more of what you've entrusted me with. She was able to live happy for the rest of her life, standing all over the room. The only reason she was able to live happy because she had a relationship with God. She understood that he had the answer in the man of God that was in her life. It, it, it all begins, we talk about stewardship, it all begins with a relationship with God. It, that's where it all begins. It all begins with the relationship with Jesus. That's where it all begins. It all begins with the relationship with Jesus. If, if you're not saved, this woman understood that a relationship with God can supply every one of your needs. But it all begins with a relationship with Jesus. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, if you're not saved, we offer Christ to you today. You're not saved. If you're not saved, there's no name that's greater. There's no name that's more powerful. There's strength in that name. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's the power to save your life in that name. How do I come into a relationship with this, this Jesus? How do, do, do I end up like this woman? I, I heard a word. I got empowered by what I heard. And I was obedient to what I heard. And my life was changed. Jesus is the life changer. He's the one who can change your life. How, how do I come into a relationship with this guy who can change my life? The Bible declares over in Romans 10, it's real simple. We make it coming to Jesus so complicated. All he needs is all. A heart that's ready to receive him. All he needs is somebody who's open and ready to walk with him. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, I know Resurrection Sunday ain't here yet, but it's still the greatest story that's ever been told. Because the Bible said no man lays down his life like this, but he laid down his life for his friends so, so that we can be called a friend of God. It begins with the relationship with him. That you believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day. The Bible says you shall be saved. And now, how does that happen? All you got to do is simply confess, Lord, I am a sinner. And I'm in need of a savior. Thank God I, I met that man who turned me from a sinner to a saint. And he wants to do the same in your life if you're not saved. I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. Because you died so that I can live unto you. 
today can be your day. We want to celebrate you. If you're in the room and you're not saved, if you're in the virtual sanctuary, if you're in the cyber sanctuary watching us this morning and you're not saved, you never confessed Jesus as Lord in your life, what a great opportunity this fourth Sunday in March of 2023 to be able to say, I gave my life to Jesus by watching on my TV, on my telephone, on my computer. I heard a word about a man who hung, bled, and died for me, who paid the price for my sins so that I can spend eternity with God. That's the whole story. We offer Christ to you. Secondly, you're saying, Pastor, I started with Jesus. You know, I, I, I trusted the Lord with my heart, but heartbreak happened in my life. Anybody in the room ever experienced heartbreak? On the save side. This is why grandma would say he's a heart fixer. And somebody walked away because their mind was troubled. She'd say this, he's a mind regulator. Somebody walked away from God because they had trouble in their life. But can I tell you, he never walked away from you. And that's the goodness of the God that we serve. That even though we, we fall by the wayside, we make some mistakes, we backslide. The Bible says he married to the backslider. <laughs> that you can't escape his love. No matter what you did, there's nothing that God cannot bring you back from. No matter what's happened in your life, nothing God can't bring you back from. Thirdly, you're saying, Pastor, I'm, I'm saved. I'm in good standing with God. I'm in right fellowship with him. Well, I'm looking for a family to be connected to. I want to partner with a local church. I want to partner with somebody who ain't afraid to get it all in my business and talk about my money. Talk about my living. And I, 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 I need to be a part of that church. We want to be a part of, of your family. We take delight in serving you to be your pastor. Can we pray real quickly for decisions? Somebody's deciding this morning to follow Jesus. No turning back. Somebody's deciding to get reconnected to him. And somebody's deciding somewhere to be a part of our family. Can we pray real quickly for decisions? Thank you, Jesus, for decisions. Somebody in the virtual sanctuary may be making a decision as well. The invitation is extended to you. We offer Christ to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the power of your name, you lift me up. You lift me up. Come on, pray for decisions. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no Thank you, Jesus. You're reaching, reaching to me. Father, we thank you that somebody has decided to make a decision to follow you. Somebody has decided to come back to you, Father. Thank you that the Bible says that you'll leave the 99 to go after the one lost sheep. And somebody has decided to partner with our ministry to become connected to a local church, whether in person or virtually. We take joy and honor to be able to serve them as their pastors. We give you glory in Jesus' name. And if you love him, come on, clap your hands this morning. Come on, if the Lord says something to your spirit this morning. Come on, go be doers of his word. Don't just be hearers only. The practicality and the message is the application. Don't just be a hearer, be a doer. As we prepare to leave this place this morning, never from your presence, an angelic host and camp around us to guard us, to protect us in all of our ways. That is we
travel up and down the safe, wet highways and byways. We've already declared safety over our life. And every obstacle, every danger, God, you are removing. That when we get back to our home, God, everything will be in its proper place. Everything will be fine. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning and us looking around and everything was fine. We give you glory for it, Lord. We give you honor for it. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of Abraham being on us this morning. That we're blessed to be a blessing. That you blessed us. You, you, you've not just given us wealth and riches, but to hoard it for ourselves. But you called us to be a blessing. That's the Abrahamic covenant. We thank you, Father, that we are children of Abraham. And if Abraham was blessed, we're blessed to be a blessing to others. We pray, Father, for the blessings of Joseph. Now, somebody may feel that they're in a pit, God, but you can take them by one decision, by being connected to you, God. You can take them from the pit to the palace. God, somebody may feel that their finances are in the pit, but you can take them to the palace. They decide to make a decision concerning their stewardship. Father, we pray for the blessings of Joel to fall fresh on us. Father, pour your spirit out on us. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to lead us, to guide us, to direct our lives. We need the Holy Spirit because Jesus said we need the Holy Spirit. And we give you glory now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or even think. Look at our lives, God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, dominion, power henceforth now and forevermore in Jesus name amen 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 come on give the Lord a hand clap of praise have a great week see you Wednesday night at Bible study virtual kisses virtual hugs God bless you all of you good to see you see you Wednesday night see ya you are my strength, strength like no other.